me talk to you about is grace. Let me explain the grace that God gives because there are many of you that that when you're going through a most difficult time, it feels like it's unbearable. It feels like you can't make it. It feels like you can't take it. You, it's like pulling on your mind and everything. Good morning, Christy. So I want to talk about you. Those of you that, that sometimes even inbox me and sometimes you, you, those of you that say, I can't take it. It's too hard. Pray for me. All these attacks are coming against me. Pray for me. It's like I'm, you know, everything is coming against me. I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you. I want to talk to talk to you about the grace that God has upon our life. We have a grace. The Bible says, I'm going to go ahead and get started. The Bible says that by grace, we are saved through faith. That not of ourselves, but it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Grace is a gift. Grace is something that God extends, something that God permits. There is a, um, I want to use two points. I want to use two points and I'm going to be done. Two points. I'm going to talk about two points. And the, the point I'm going to talk about is an example of, of God's grace as a father, as a parent. Uh, it's like, it's like a, like a kid, like in a box. The more that child becomes more trustworthy and the more that child becomes more independent and listening and doing the things uh, as a parent that I tell them to do or that the parent tell them to do, that box will expand. And the more that box will expand, the more, uh, the more leeway that that person will have to operate within certain parameters. The same thing with God, the same thing with God, in God, it says a grace is a gift. And it comes through faith, gives everybody a measure of faith as well. And your faith grows by hearing. And what happens, the more uh, you hear God's word and the more you grow and develop, the more uh, uh, the more God's grace, uh, there's a certain amount of grace that you can operate in. In other words, like when you have a, there's a certain assignment, God will not give you an assignment without the grace. If he doesn't give you the grace, in other words, the, the leeway or the parameters or the guidelines or the protection uh, to operate in, such as Paul said that he he had sought God thrice, three times about this message in the flesh. He sought God three times. And then he c concluded to the fact that he will glory in his infirmities uh, that the power might rest in, upon him. In other words, in other words, his glory, it, God will become great when he's suffering because there's a certain grace that's permitted. That's why God said his grace is sufficient. Uh, that's what he told Paul God bless you. Amen. 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 God, 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 he told the apostle, God's grace is sufficient and his strength is made perfect in his weakness. For those of you, God bless you, apostle, that are going through what you're going through. When you're going through God, the reason God said his grace is sufficient. In other words, what's inside God's grace is enough to, to sustain you, to make you go through. So when you think that it's unbearable and you can't make it, just know that the grace that God extends is the necessary ingredients. It's the necessary food and it's the necessary antidote and it's the necessary strength that God gives for you to go through it. And so what happened is that when you're going through, what's happened is that you are growing, you're expanding. And as you're expanding, your flesh is dying out. And the more your flesh dies out, the more God can trust you. When God extends a greater grace to you, that means that God can trust you. That's just like with a kid. The more you trust your kid from doing certain things, when they become trustworthy, uh, when they become old as teenagers, you might leave them alone, leave them home, or let them uh, use your car. When they prove themselves to become more trustworthy, then you will give them more leeway. The same thing with God. The more you, the more God can trust you, the more God will expand and give you more leeway. But even in what you're going through, the necessary grace that God has given for a certain assignment. God says that it's more than enough. And so you don't, you cannot be appointed. You have to be invited. This is like the spirit of God. The spirit of God is an invitation. God invites you just like in the old Testament, the Holy of Holies, uh, or, or the King in order to come to the King, you have to have a gift, but that King must lift up his scepter. And so you can come, then you can come. But if that King doesn't lift up his scepter, then you can't come. That's the same thing with God and his grace. God does a scepter. 
And the more, the more God can trust you and the more God can, uh, 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 uh more you become faithful over the things that God give you, because the Bible said we grow from faith to faith, the glory to glory, then God will give you more. I hope this makes sense, but that's what it is, God's grace. Just know that God's grace is upon your life to do what it, what it is. And also, when God's grace is upon your life, you're, there's a knowing. There's a knowing, there's a release, there's a, uh, there's a liberty. There's a liberty that God will operate, that you would operate in too, because there's instructions. Also, with, with grace, with the word, where the Bible said faith comes by hearing, God is going to give you instructions on the exact thing that he wants you to do, the assignment. And so that's why you must posture yourself and don't complain and just listen and, 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 and endure the process. The Bible says to endure. See, it's not in the beginning or at the end, but it's in the journey. It's the process, the wilderness. That's where you'll be made. And in that place where you're going through changes, that's where God has proven himself in you. God is bringing something out of you because the Bible said that God said that the foundation of the Lord is sure and he know all that are his. In other words, there's an overcomer in you. So in a situation where you feel defeated, you already overcame because God has put his seed in you. That means you're going to make it. That means you're going to rise. No matter what situation you're in, you're going to make it. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Amen. God bless you, apostle. Amen. Amen. Mature enough to wait. Amen. You're right. You're right. Yeah. There's a process. There's a process. And that process is time. Time. You have to allow God because <coughs> with me, I've been in ministry. I've been in ministry uh, 30 years. And just over the last uh, three, four years, God has really been releasing me. And so in that time, God was holding me because I was ready. It was my time. No, it was my time. It was my time to learn. Just like Joshua. <clears throat> it took Joshua 40 years to serve Moses. Then once Moses went off the scene, then Joshua's ready. And so you don't want to push the cart before the heart, uh, uh, the cart, the horse before the cart, because that's where zeal is concerned. We, we can also have zeal and uh, not, not, not according to knowledge. That's why we must wait. The Bible said, teach and we don't teach and preach and we don't preach. There's a process because in that wait, there's a settling. God will settle you. There's a substance. There's an aroma and there's a flavor that must come upon you. you that, that, that you'll be able to uh, handle the test. <clears throat> so in other words, until you become graduated or until that flavor or that aroma comes out of you where God breaks certain things over you. And then when you're ready, then God will release you to that next place where he trusts you. That's where his grace comes. His grace will feed you. His grace will feed you. And so I, you know, I'm done. I told you I'm going to be long, but I just want to explain that to you. Thank you. Amen. Uh, uh, prophet, prophet Sanders, but his grace, God gives everybody. There's a certain amount of grace. It is not nothing that you do physically, but it's that you open up your heart and say, God, forgive me and invite them into your life. But then falling on to obey him because the more you obey God and the more you please God, the more God will release to you that you can have because you know, the, the more you become faithful. <laughs> That's why the Bible says when you become faithful over a few things, then God will make a rule of many. So it's a process. And so stay in your process and, and don't be don't be in a rush because the Bible says you can have a zeal according to knowledge. That's why you must study, not just knowledge and understanding because knowledge is knowing, but uh, wisdom is applying, but understanding is to how it all go together. The, the total complete connection. That's what you have to have. You just can't have knowing it because the Lord have a little knowledge <coughs> without knowing how to apply it. It's useless. It's just having a nice car, but don't know how to drive it. The same thing with knowledge. You must even wait. There's a process. There's a process that God must take you through. Also, life, life, the thing that I learned, life is almost like a, a puzzle. And as life goes on, as I learn, it's like every piece is being put in place wherein I can see the picture. And so you must allow that picture to be made, God to make it clear to you. You can't move in an unclear vision, but you must move in a vision that you can see. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You must see it. That's why, you, that's why the Bible said when you, when you write the vision, I write it up on tables that men, that people, men might read it and run. In other words, it got to be clear. It's got to be clear before you run. I'm done. God bless you. Thank you so much. Amen. God bless you. But your yeah, grace and patience, wait, patience, you got to wait. And wait and wait don't just mean don't do nothing. Wait means to serve. That's what it means. Like a waiter, waitress means to serve. That means to do what God has called occupied till you come. You know, even David, even though David was in the line, like he was on the backside working, tending sheep. He came into a lion, a bear. He was working on his craft. In other words, you got to work on your craft. You got to keep operating, keep moving, keep moving. Can't, can't be stagnant. 
Because you prepare in peace time that when war time come, you'll be ready. That's why the Bible said, the Bible said to be ready, uh, be ready. Uh, uh, in the book of uh, Peter it says, always be ready to give an answer that's in you with meekness and, he, uh, with meekness and fear. You got to be ready. It has to be in your heart where your, where your words be seasoned with salt, where you're able to know how to give an answer. Hey, man, hey, give me a call later, my brother. Give me a call, uh, prophet. Give me a call. But wait it. See, some, some season, some of you, it's your waiting season. It's your learning season. Because you, in order to be a great leader, you got to be a great follower, a great student. We always got to be a student because knowledge, wisdom is the ability to recognize wisdom. Just like with the president, with the, the wise man will, the thing that he don't know, he'll surround himself around the people that know that they might teach him their wisdom, their wisdom. So always, always have a, a spirit to listen, always have a spirit to learn because, you know, life is learning. Every day is different. And we learn from each other. Preachers, we all learn from each other. We all watch each other and we learn certain things. <coughs> the Bible said we'll help us one to another. And, and the Bible said we're one body with different members, but one body, one spirit. And so we all connected because if one, if the arm hurts, then the leg hurt. We're connected together. That's why we must stay unified. We must communicate and stay in harmony. I'm done. <coughs> I, I said I'm going to be brief. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless you. I'm going to, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to forward over. Uh, to my other page, and uh, if you want to, you can share it. Give me a few minutes, uh, but his grace. Just know that what you're dealing with, there's a grace that God has given you. What you're going through, your family, your kids, your pains, your hurts, your ministry, betrayal, backstay out, whatever, there's a grace that God has given. And in the time where you feel like giving up, remember what the God words that his grace is sufficient. And the strength is made perfect in your weakness. In other words, God is perfecting his power. He's perfecting his, his, he's perfecting his word. He's perfecting his name in you. He's perfecting. He's perfecting. He makes perfect it. He makes it strong. He makes it stronger and stronger. <clears throat> See, it's like a dunamis. A dunamis is power that's generated from an explosion. So when there's an explosion, when something is, is explodes, there's something that there's something also in you that explodes and becomes stronger. See, you can't die, you multiply. <laughs> like baby kid. But there's a there's an explosion, there's a multiplication that expands. You expand, you grow. It's like breathing in the it's like breathing. <clears throat> It's like put the helium in a balloon. And the more helium you get, the more that the balloon expands. God will cause you to expand. That's why you must allow God to breathe in you and blow in you. <clears throat> because when God breathing you and blowing you, he's, bro he's blowing his pneuma. He's blowing his life. He's blowing his wisdom. He's blowing his power. He's blowing and strengthening you. I'm done. God bless you. Amen. Please share.